Hi, this is Regina Y. Favors with Pre-Singles Counseling. This is part of my Pre-Singles Counseling Coaching Curriculum where I design lessons and case studies based in the psychology literature on different topics. This Pre-Singles Counseling is targeted to three types of individuals. The first individual is a single, is a person who is interested in becoming single. That, per, that means that person is not necessarily interested in dating or entering the marriage market. The second individual is a single individual who is interested in entering the dating market. And then the last individual is a single dating individual who is interested in marriage. So take some time to listen to this lesson and our case study. Please leave a comment uh, and I will reply. In addition, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the notification bell if you are interested in further topics. This is Pre-Singles Counseling, a Pre-Singles Counseling Coaching Curriculum. Thank you for visiting the channel. This lesson is subject to fair use where I will comment, criticize, um, offer research as well as teach and provide scholarship. Single women should be knowledgeable about what it means to be single and how to navigate their singleness regardless of, of a decision to date or marry. This means that single women should take the necessary time to learn about their singleness, set academic, professional, and personal goals, and contemplate whether they are ready to enter the dating market. Single women should never enter the dating market without a goal and a plan. Therefore, one of the most important aspects of being a single woman is that you can plan your transition, establish a time schedule, set mating preferences, and learn about how men and women date. Pre-singles counseling is based in a decision to enter or exit singleness. Pre-singles is the time period between single and contemplation of dating. There is a difference between being a single individual and being a sin single individual who has entered the dating market, which includes the sex market. Pre-singles counseling reflects the processes by which an individual researches, learns, and plans to navigate life either as a single, a dating single, or a single interested in marriage. So pre-singles defined, pre-singles counseling is defined as the research processes and planning for entering a state of singlehood. The main target audience is 18 to 45 years of age, man and woman. However, middle school to high school students are considered. Processes include single to single. So that is that transitional time prior to entering the dating market at any age. Single to dating single that transitional time prior to considering marriage, and then single dating to marriage, that transitional time prior to and after premarital counseling. Pre-singles counseling is the immediate strategy of adopting life plans to manage the self as a responsible individual adult, adult up to and including a major life change. So here are some pre-lecture discussion questions. So are you single? This question means single without separation or dating rotation or on, on again, off again, boyfriend or any other romantic relationship, including rebounding and dating. Why are you single? Are you enduring a recent separation from a romantic partner? Do you plan to remain single? What are your plans to change from single to a member of a romantic couple or marriage? Do you have a financial plan as a single woman? And you will see throughout this lecture, this orientation course, um, that I focus most, if not all of the topics on having a financial plan. We oftentimes make uh, unsound decisions based upon um, 
the fact that we don't have enough money or we are looking for money or we are looking for someone to cover us and we are not covering ourselves financially. So keep that in mind. You will, you will see throughout this orientation multiple references to financial planning. Pre-discussion, so what is your SWAT? So I'm using um, SWAT that you would normally see in business um, as a way to um, get you to engage your own personal SWAT. So what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are your opportunities? What are your threats? So after each section, I will ask you what your SWAT is. So your assignment plan where is your place and this is important because you need to know to which or to whom you are assigned and that not every place you don't just take any job you don't just take every job you take a specific job that is tailored um, to your assignment so your assignment defined your assignment is predicated on the gifts and talents you have Fulfilling that assignment is based on your discovery of those gifts and talents. Assignment in general is defined as that task or work you must complete as part of your job or course of study. However, your spiritual assignment is a divine calling to carry out a divine purpose. It requires some discernment, preparation, and obedience to divine and earthly instructions to carry out God's intentions for a people, a place, a time, and or a season. Carrying out your assignment requires fear of the Lord, which means respect and honor. So if you think about it like this, uh, Moses was assigned to the children of Israel, but Aaron was assigned to Moses. So you have to know if you are assigned to a person to a group of people, to a particular uh, um, advocacy, you know, um, to what or to whom you are assigned? What is the actual divine calling? And then part of you fulfilling that divine calling will require obedience. That means you have to obey a divine instruction if you are called to a, a divine purpose, right? For uh, Moses, it was to get the people out of the uh um out of egypt so that took some kind of exposure to that way of thinking that's why he was you know basically given up and then an egyptian found him and so he was raised up in egyptian uh context and thinking and laws and principles and notions and ideals so that by the time he was to um lead the people out of Egypt, he understood how to uh, actually approach the uh, the Pharaoh at that time. He knew the mannerisms, he knew the standards, he knew, he knew the code, he knew the values. So he had to not only know that, but he also had to tune his ear to God's instruction, um, you know, God's direction, when to go and when to stop. Right, and you're not gonna be able to fulfill the assignment if you don't know how to tune your ear. Therefore, you have to make sure that you stay out of distraction. All distraction is a form of setback, stay out of it, right? Um, you have too many people around you and you can't hear God, or you can't even hear your own conscience talking. You, you can't even hear your own mind telling you that this is not the right way to go. And then also your assignment requires that you have respect for the Lord. Um, that means you have to have a, a respect and honor for the one who, um, who gave you the assignment. Discovering your assignment. Uh, what is your assignment? So are you assigned to a person? Or are you assigned to a people? Do you understand your limits? And do you know your struggles? So I've already tackle the first two the last two are interesting because you are not called to serve the whole world and I've heard someone say this you're not you're not Jesus jr. right you're not 
Moses Jr. Okay, there are limits to your calling or to your assignment. Eventually, you're going to have to pass the baton. You can't live forever. So it's always important that you mentor someone else and help them uh, plan as well. So part of your limits is understanding that you, um, part of understanding your limits is understanding that you have limits. Also, if you have not taken the time to master the knowledge and develop the expertise necessary to carry out the calling, that's the limit. That you cannot go at something with just a general understanding. That's why I asked at the beginning of this uh, orientation, what are your general planning uh, strengths and weaknesses and opportunities and threats? Because that's a general understanding. Then you're going to have to move yourself to a specific understanding of uh, what you need to know. And then your struggles. Your struggles are interesting always because do you have a predisposition to certain types of uh, you know, substance abuse or certain types of temptations? Do you have uh, you know, financial management problems? Part of carrying out the vision is m managing the money. And if you have trouble managing your own money or you don't have a respect for money, then you're definitely going to have a problem with it while you are trying to manage the assignment. You don't want people not paid. They all work for your organization, but you can't pay them, right? It, uh, not everything is volunteer. So knowing your struggles is also very, very important. Understanding your struggles should also help you to understand where you are supposed to be in terms of your assignment. So where is your assignment? Where are you most effective geogra uh, geographically? You can have the right gift and talent and be in the wrong place. So geography matters. So for instance, uh, ex uh, example, if you have a gambling problem, it may not be a good idea for you to live in a gambling city. That's just in a general understanding, right? But suppose your, your gifts and talents are supposed to be used in a gambling city, right? In a casino city then you would have to make sure that you don't live near the casino or you have to make sure that you don't visit the casino. I don't, I wouldn't want to set myself up to fail. Uh, there are many exceptions to the rule. I, I can't really uh, outline them here. It's all very much, um, you know, subjective because you can't live in fear. But I would venture to say that where you are is just as important as what you are. Your gifts and talents are important, but they may not necessarily work in every context. So if, say for instance, you um, uh, teach, okay? Um, you have the gift of teaching and you wanna teach at the university level. And anytime you wanna teach at the university level, you need a PhD to do that. Or you need to be in a doctoral program leading to a PhD um, you can graduate teach and then move and transition into, say, like a, a lecturer, adjunct, or something like that. Uh, but you want to teach at that level, but something about the environment is not conducive for you to teach at that level. Even though you are, all of you and I mean, all, all of the faculty members are teaching exactly the same text or um, subject matter is something about the way that you teach it is not conducive to that environment. Maybe you are being hindered, maybe you are being blocked. You know, I hear a lot of times uh, people who teach K through 12, there's a certain way they wanna teach a subject matter, but then the principal, the superintendent, the other administrators try to block them from teaching it uh, in a certain kind of way. But you have to think about the learner right? You have to think about the student, how the student learns. So using your gifts and talents, um, you know, discovering your assignment and using your gifts and talents are very important, but it matters where you are, that you can find more success uh, in using your gifts and talents with your assignment in one area more than another, even though 
Um, and we often base our decisions to move from one geography to the next on money. But you can have all the money in the world and not be effective too. You can be in a very nice neighborhood and uh, teaching uh, private school kids, right? And still feel like you are uninspired. You just somehow, you just can't get the students to, to be inspired, which means that you are not really inspired. So you can have the right gift and talent, but be in the wrong place. It doesn't mean that your gift and talent is wrong, but when it's placed within, with, uh, within the wrong context, it will produce um, negative results. So geography matters. How have you prepared for the assignment? So what is your academic prepar uh, preparation? What is your professional preparation? Are both sufficient for you to carry out your assignment? Will you need continuing education? People oftentimes don't think they need education. That's why you have all these people who like to push this narrative that, uh, that college is not for everybody. But as I noted in previous slides, that college, um, that uh, you have to add to your existing knowledge base. You can't go out and teach people and not know anything. You have to understand learning styles. You got to know how people uh, learn and think and process. That's why a good course in psychology is very important because you have to understand the importance of, of um, applying knowledge. So that requires you to become a student of something that you will later rule over. So if you want to be the, you know, dating coach, you know, you know, the number one dating coach person, you're going to have to read about dating and in the sex market and the marriage market. And all of that is in the psychology literature. It's not just in these self-help books, even though self-help books are very important because then it would lend credibility to any of the notions that you are putting out there. You won't look like a person who is just basically opinion-based, that you will have what you need backed up by evidence. Uh, also, professional preparation. If you wanna have your own business, it's important to work for a business. And then when you work for the business, it's important that you are maybe like a supervisor or coordinator or something like that, where you have responsibilities for budgeting, scheduling, um, and supervising people. Anybody who wants an administrative supervisor, manager, you know, director type type of position, need to be able to manage people, need to be able to schedule people, need to be able to supervise, need to be able to manage a budget. Those those things are very important. So, uh, um, if you want to one day have your own business, you need to be exposed to a successful business. And then you need to know if both are sufficient. That means that really speaks to timeline. Just because you go to college for one year doesn't necessarily mean that you are fully baked. That the four years, that's why they set college as four years and sometimes some as five in terms of the sciences because they understand that it's gonna take that much time to process you in the thinking of that major because the the college environment really is no different than the workforce environment you're basically going to step foot out of one and into another and then continuing education it just depends on the field there are certain fields that require you to renew your licenses every two to five years by taking coursework and completing those coursework for credit so uh, even if you don't have that as an issue, you always want to stay abreast of new ideas, new concepts that are appropriate to your field. If you're having a business, you have to stay abreast of new tax laws, especially if they're going to benefit you and your business. You have to stay uh, abreast of you know, contract uh, principles, um, torts, uh, which is um, um, injury, harm. Uh, anything that is criminal, you know, you want to you want to stay abreast of new knowledge. Knowledge check. So your assignment, considering your academic, professional, and personal goals, 
especially in pursuit of financial stability, answer the following. Do you know your assignment? So what are your assignment planning strengths? What are your assignment planning weaknesses? What are your assignment planning opportunities? And what are your assignment planning threats? So, um, you know, for a minute, if you think about assignment planning, think about it in terms of you taking a course and the teacher has given you an essay to write a prompt. So you don't write the essay on the day the essay is due or the day before the essay is due. From the moment you get that prompt, you need to begin planning. So if the essay prompt calls for 10 sources based on a particular topic, then you need to start researching those sources. Now schedule that, right? If the essay prompt calls for um, integrating um, certain kinds of evidence, especially, you know, statistics, you need to go and and begin looking for that because it might take some time to find that kind of evidence if you are not uh, familiar, right? If the essay requires that you go and interview someone, okay, well, time is of the essence. You know, the essays are usually due two to three weeks after you receive a prompt. So then um, when are you going to schedule that time to meet with that person to interview? So. When you think about the assignment, your life's calling, and you are assigned to a person or a group of people, your engagement with the work in terms of the preparation that you have to do, and your engagement with uh, applying that knowledge to the people that you have to uh, uh, serve, that's going to take planning. So what are your assignment planning strengths? One strength could be that you are um, great at communicating what it is you need to do in terms of your uh, assignment planning, that communication is not a problem for you. Your weaknesses could be that you're not good with timing, that you're going to give a speech, but you're just bad. You, you just arrived late. You are great at preparing the speech to talk to a group of people. But no one can depend on you to be on time. So that means you need to take that into consideration when you are planning out your, your assignment, right? Uh, your assignment planning opportunities could be to maybe have a mentor to uh, teach you how to manage your time, especially when you have to be in certain places. So for instance, if you're thinking about running for office, right? And you have to talk to a number of community, uh, talk to people in, in a number of communities and you got to get across town and people don't like to wait. You know, it's very important because once you get them there, you need to, you know, do something with them. If they're sitting outside waiting and it's cold and raining, they're going to leave. So then you can get a consultant. The opportunity here, the assignment planning opportunity would be for you to get a consultant to teach you how to manage, um, your time so you don't arrive late. And then your threats. Your threats, of course, are you. If the more you arrive late, the more people realize that you are not dependable. So if you're not dependable and trying to get elected, what makes us think you're going to be dependable once you are elected? So that's a big threat. All right, so your gift and talent plan. So understanding the differences. So operating in your gift or, and or talent is important to thriving in your life. So what is your gift? What is your talent? There is a difference between gift and talent. A gift is a natural ability or talent. An example is teaching. Teaching is also considered a spiritual gift in the Bible. A talent is a natural aptitude or skill. An example of a talent is writing. All gifts and talents need a context in which to develop. So for instance, say you don't go to a school to learn a piano, but at some point you're gonna have to uh, apply that um, um, gift and or talent and with learning how to play the piano, it could be a gift in terms of you, you planning by ear, but then you have to build the talent por uh, portion of it, which is the skill. 
So that means you're going to have to have a piano if you're not going to go to a school. Eventually, though, if you're going to move to the next level uh, in terms of you wanting to compete, maybe in, you know, competitions or play for a major audience, you're going to need some teacher or mentor. So then there are are different types of uh, context. The most important context that you can start with is is by going to a school. So just about every um, school or community college has um, has um, instruments that you can play on, that you can practice on, and then you have the teacher, and the teacher gives you you know guidance and direction. So all your gifts and talents need context. I understand that people can avoid going to college and still be successful using their gifts and talents. But eventually you're going to run out of steam or you're going to run into a brick wall because you don't have the record of success of practicing that gift and talent. You don't have anything to fall back. You don't have the lessons that you would have learned had you taken a course, more than one course, had you had because you, you can recognize where you are struggling in the course itself or in your alone time when you're trying to hit the keys and the keys are not responding right the way that you want or the music is just not becoming the music. OK, that is all recognizable when you are within particular context. So all gifts and talents need a context in which to develop. Knowledge check, so gift and talents. Considering your academic, professional, and personal goals, especially in pursuit of financial stability, answer the following. So what are your gift and talent strengths? What are your gift and talent weaknesses? What are your gift and talent opportunities? What are your gift and talent threats? So, you know, when you look at this, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and if you think about it being strength in terms of you can play by ear, right? You can play the piano by ear without necessarily looking at the notes on the page, okay? Something about the you hitting the key and something about it, and you just you just know how to respond. But the weakness would be not being able to read the music especially if you wanted to uh, say, go and play for a symphony or an orchestra or just for an organization overall, or play um, you know, competitively or for a band or anything. That weakness would be if everybody else learn, knows how to read music and you don't, that's a weakness. So then the, uh, then the obvious opportunity would be to learn how to read music. And then, then the threats would be loss of, of work opportunities or job opportunities, those opportunities that require you to read music. A threat would be you not learning how to read music. And then, of course, you won't be able to get any jobs to take care of yourself. So conclusions, beliefs about mistakes. So I don't have a full conclusion. I just I just thought that this right here this quote from the film Unfaithful was very important. When I put this uh, presentation together, I thought about it. Uh, the movie had just come on HBO, so it was very fresh in my mind. Uh, but this is the, the conversation that Paul Vartan is having with Connie Sumner in Unfaithful. Uh, Richard Gere was her husband. And um, she was talking about mistakes or something like that. And Paul Vartan made a very interesting statement that I did not catch all the times I have watched this film. I did not catch it until now. And it could be because it was for me to catch it now. There is no such thing as a mistake. There is what you do and what you don't do. And it is as simple as that. It is black and white. It is not uh, issues of gray that there is the thing that you do and then there's a thing that you don't do. And so if Connie did not want to um, have an affair, then she didn't have to do it. There was nothing that forced her to have an affair. She forced herself. She, she sought it out. Uh, she visualized it. She sought it out. She made the call. She visited him multiple times and she had an affair, period. 
she had already had it, had an affair in her heart uh, emotionally even before she got there. But it, there is no such thing as a mistake. There is what you do and what you don't do. And that's what I want to leave you with, that even if we're, we're not talking about affairs in this pre-singles counseling coaching uh, curriculum orientation, that uh, if you find yourself getting into the dating market and the sex market and then you get pregnant or something like that and you just you didn't intend for that you say that out loud i didn't intend for that i wasn't planning for that well you actually were planning for that because if you didn't use any protection right uh, you were planning for it. but this is something if you date with with purpose if you date with a goal um as a single individual, this will, will help you to hedge against that particular issue. If you don't want to have uh, sex that to lead with a baby, then you need to push for the partner to use contraception, or you need to push for yourself to use contraception, uh, or perform a number of, of strategies, like the pullout game, I don't know. But um, this is you living a single life with purpose with a plan with a goal so that things like this just don't pop up and and you say oh i didn't mean to i didn't mean to i'm sorry i should have done better okay because you because you can't say that all the time once the child is here that's that's the rest of your life once you get with the wrong partner who might introduce you to drugs that is an addiction that's going to take some time to get over and resolve once you get involved with somebody that you find uh, uh and you know fall in love and find out that he's married that's hard to get out of it, you can get out of it but it's hard to get out of so that's why it's important to uh think about being single understand date with a person establish objectives because if you don't you're going to find that what you do in your personal life is going to affect your uh your academic and professional lives, especially your professional. You don't want Paul Vartan to come visit you at your job because you waited too long to cut it off, right? So I'm going to leave you with this as you think about your singleness and whether you want to stand, uh, stay single, single to single, whether you want to begin dating single uh, to dating single, or whether you are interested in marriage, single dating or dating single to um single um single leading to marriage right so that's something that i want you to think about and i thank you very much for listening to this lecture all right so hopefully you were able to gain insight from this video discussion please like subscribe and visit so uh, please like the video hit hit the notification bell for more discussions i am re-uploading all of my audios uh so i, I needed to make some changes to them. Uh, you can visit my web, my website for more content at reginawhyfavors.com. If you want to send me an email, you can send an email reginawhyfavors at yahoo.com. Please also purchase the book. It's going to come out in spring 2021. So I had to make changes um, to my book to update it. And I also updated, updated the title. So the original title was Bait, Hook, and Switch. Confessions of a Rebound Girl, and I have updated the title to Toxic Encounters, Why People Pursue Rebound Relationships. So right now I'm still basically editing it, and I want to make it available in spring 2021. So thank you very much for visiting my channel, and I am Regina Y. Favors. Have a great day.